Welcome, I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, convenes a national security summit, says issue of kidnapping will be dealt with. Senate and House of Representatives back the takeover of ARIC by Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, as Amcon suggests concessioning of airline. Senate President and the Speaker are in London to see President Muhammadu Buhari over his health. And trouble is brewing over stories revealing the massive influence of Russia on the U.S. presidential campaign. On business news tonight, Nigeria's annual inflation rate times 12 straight months to 18.72% in January 2017 amid rising cost of food, transport and electricity. On sports news tonight, Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt insists no regrets ahead of 2017 retirement plan. And from Abuja, Amnesty International in Nigeria promises to investigate the alleged murder of a suspect who died in the custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. We start off with a visit of the Senate leadership to President Muhammadu Buhari in London. We can tell you that the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, have seen the President. Others on the team are the Deputy Speaker, Lassen Yusuf, and the Senate leader, Senator Ahmed Lawan. The four-man team left for London this morning to see the President, who has extended his vacation to attend to his health. President Buhari had written to the National Assembly on February the 5th, informing them of his desire to extend his leave in order to complete a series of tests ordered by his doctors in the UK. On Monday, President Buhari had a telephone conversation with US President Donald Trump on Nigeria-US bilateral relations, prompting calls by some Nigerians for President Buhari to directly communicate with citizens on his condition. Now, if you're one of those worried about the rising cases of kidnapping in the country, then this news might interest you. The Inspector General of Police, Mr. Ibrahim Idris, today acknowledged that kidnapping has been a disturbing issue and the police hierarchy is considering holding a national summit to address the situation. Mr. Idris announced this while speaking at a meeting with commissioners of police and other senior police officers in Abuja today. It is the monthly meeting of the Inspector General of Police and senior police officers from the rank of Commissioner of Police. The Inspector General of Police expresses concerns about the increasing cases of kidnapping and other security challenges as he announced plans to convene a national security summit. Security is everybody's business, both the police and the citizens. These people live among the people. And that's why I said we are, we are, going, to, we are, we are going to conduct a security summit to address most of these security challenges we are having in this country. And this summit is going to cover from the traditional rulers, religious leaders, every sector of the Nigerian community are going to be involved. And that's an indication to you that security is everybody's business. The Inspector General, who used the occasion to challenge senior police officers to brace up to the challenges of securing the nation, appealed for increased budgetary allocation to ensure an improved performance of the force. The police, if you look, observe the last year of the budget of the police. I've attended, you know, some two uh, sessions of the Senate and the House of Representatives. And the main focus is that the police need more funding for it to perform effectively. And I want to appreciate, despite this little funding that has been given, we have done wonderfully well to ensure that this country remains safe and united. The meeting later went into closed door to allow the top police officers brainstorm on how to curb the security challenges facing the nation. And here's some cheering news from the police headquarters on the arrest of one of those behind the kidnap of the secretary of the Landlord Association of Isheri North Estate in Lagos. The Federal Intelligence Response Team revealed that the suspect was arrested in Ugijo area of Ogun State. 
He allegedly confessed to taking part in the kidnap of the estate landlord and the Tulip International School, Isheri. He was also arrested in his building still under construction and he claimed that part of the money from the deal had been invested in that building. The police says it sealed the building while investigations continue. The suspect says a 5 million naira ransom was paid. And to effectively resolve the challenge of prison congestion and delay in the courts, state governments must begin to domesticate and implement the Criminal Justice Act. Well, that's according to the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, who was represented by Justice Mary Peter Odili at a judicial colloquium on the administration of Criminal Justice Act in Abuja. According to the Acting CJN, the application of the federal law through the state houses of assembly would accelerate judicial decisions. Our correspondent Gloria Umezuke reports. Congestion of prisons and delay in trial of cases are clearly hallmarks of a failing system of criminal justice administration across states. Thank you. This issue took a progressive turn at this judicial colloquium, which focuses on the underlying challenges. The purpose of this act is to ensure that the system of administration of criminal justice in Nigeria promotes efficient management of criminal justice institutions, speedy dispensation of justice. It is imperative that the act be domesticated at the state level. The president of the Center for Social and Legal Studies reveals another disturbing fact. 70% of the prison population in the country are awaiting trial, which speaks volumes of the system. How can the courts and other agencies cope with the challenge of conducting day-to-day -day trials of cases without reliable means of electronic recording of proceedings or without the requisite witnesses being produced before them by the prosecutors. Yet it is unclear whether there are provisions in the budget for these essential aids to criminal justice administration. In spite of the benefits of the Criminal Justice Act, until fully implemented by states, the future of the justice system and the nation hangs in the balance. The reform of criminal justice administration is one of the means of restoring sanity to the society. This consists not merely in changing the procedural system, but also in updating the substantive criminal codes. After years of mere talk, the judiciary have once again swung open the doors of reform in the justice system while also hoping that the government would invest more in the system to meet growing demands. Gloria Umezuke, Channel Television News. The Senate Committee on Banking and Financial Institutions has endorsed the takeover of Arik Airline by the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON. The managing director of AMCON, Mr. Ahmed Kuru, at a separate meeting with the Senate and House Committees on Banking and Aviation, explained the reasons for the takeover. Our correspondent Linda Akigbe reports. That is very critical. So you know in this medium-sized meeting room in the National the Assembly, the, nation the Senate Committee on Banking is meeting with officials of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON. They are discussing the federal government's shocking takeover of Arik Airline. I suggest if my colleagues agree, let us hear from them first. The managing director of AMCON told members of the committee that Arik is indebted to AMCON to the tune of 146 billion naira, which excludes ARIC's indebtedness to other banks and aviation authorities. He also says ARIC Airline has consistently defaulted in paying off its loans and has a serious problem of lack of accountability. Apart from AMCON, ARIC is also currently indebted to other commercial institutions uh, in Nigeria, about 165 billion. And uh, they have failed to even pay staff salaries. They always staff salary uh, for periods ranging between five to seven months, depending on what department you are working on. The managing director of AMCON, however, says government has no plans to rationalize staff of ARIC. Intervention in ARIC is not the usual recovery intervention. 
it is an intervention that should be done in such a way and manner that Arik must be supported and must continue to fly. For us here, yeah, we see this as an, a people's decision, the government decision, and we have said that we are supporting you, so uh, that's why I'm using we. At a separate meeting in the House of Representatives, the managing director of AMCON told committee members that the solution to the problems in the aviation sector is for government to concession the sector for effective management. It's been done everywhere. Concessioning is the most important thing that we, because we can't do it. Anybody said we can do it, we've not done it in the last 50 years. Mr. Kuru, however, refuted reports that the federal government took over Arig Airlines with the intention of making it a national carrier, describing it as untrue. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. Nigeria is now producing 2 million barrels of crude per day, and the country may soon surpass the 2.2 million barrels of crude oil earmarked for the 2017 budget. And that's according to the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibo Kachiku, who appeared before the House of Representatives Committee on Petroleum Upstream today. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, was also at the National Assembly to defend the Army's 2017 budget proposal. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, reports. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and officials of the Ministry appearing before the House Committee on Petroleum Upstream for the 2017 Budget Defence Session. The Minister outlines the achievements of the Ministry in 2016 and makes some projections for this year. Uh, there was struggled, of course, in 2016, like you know, a lot of militancy issues. Um, uh, per barrel drop uh, all the way down to about 1.2 million barrels. Uh, we were able to push that uh, consistently upwards, uh, despite uh, critical hits in Forcados and a few other areas. Um, and um, we have been able so far, at least by the end of uh, December, to get a production up to about 1.8 million barrels, and today about 2 million barrels. Meanwhile, the Chief of Army staff and officials of the Nigerian Army are before the House Committee on Army to defend their 2017 budget proposal of 152.8 billion naira. The Chief of Army staff speaks on their work in the Northeast. The Northeast does not uh, remain only with the operational uh, aspects, but we also get ourselves involved as part of the programs for winning the hearts and minds of the populace. We need their support to be able to uh, get more knowledge and information about the activities of the Boko Haram terrorists who are widespread in the, uh, terror, uh, in, the, in, in the region. The House of Representatives Committee on Governmental Affairs also meets with the National Lottery Regulatory Commission. The meeting is to look at the Commission's performance with the 2016 budget and how it plans for the 2017 budget. But the meeting starts on a shaky note. I'm surprised because somebody is slamming a three-page summary at us from a government agency that's supposed to generate funds. And we're still here wasting our time and looking at it. Where are the attachments? Where are the analysis? What are we looking at? The commission is to return to face the committee when it has its documents well prepared. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. The Katsina State House of Assembly today impeached its speaker, Alhaji Ali Mudru. 23 out of 24 lawmakers endorsed the vote of no confidence before his impeachment was announced. Meanwhile, Mr. Abubakar Kusada has emerged as the new speaker of the Katsina House of Assembly. The impeached 34-year-old speaker is from Muru in Mani local government area of Katsina State. In part two, after the break, we'll be assessing the modular refineries proposed by the acting president for the Niger Delta region and will be joined by Mr. Alex Ogidingbe, former managing director of Kaduna Refinery. Do stay with us.